Okay, so I decided to make another video. I have one already of me loading this uh, this machine on a flat deck trailer. I happened to watch it and notice it. It didn't really explain much. So I'm going to make a quick video and I'm going to thoroughly explain everything and why I do what I do. I know a lot of what I'm going to show you probably already know. But... Uh, that guy watching over there in the corner behind you, he doesn't really know a lot, so I'll be thorough. <clears throat> in this video, I'm going to show you one simple mistake that could ruin your day, more than ruin your day. I've done it myself, and I've seen it done by others. It's... It's not what you might think. It's nothing to do with the machine falling off or the trailer falling off the truck. It's nothing like that. It's something you would never expect. And it happens a lot. Okay, just quickly here. You want a truck that is capable of doing what you're planning on doing. So you want it to be able to handle the weight. Super duty. There's a lot of hills here in BC, so it's preferable to have a diesel. Not necessary, but just preferable, way more torque. You want tires that are going to handle the weight load. These ones here, load range E. I think E stands for excellent. Now this is something that's easier to show you before I hook the trailer up. Okay, so now, originally when I bought this truck, there was a sticker on the, on the hitch, and it said, uh, I believe it said 12,000 pound capacity. And it was here on the receiver somewhere. So I thought, yeah, good to go. Well, not necessarily true. You also want your ball mount to be strong enough, which mine wasn't. Mine was a hollow ball mount. Um, this one here is solid. And it, this one's, oh, I forget what this one's good for, but it's way overrated for what I'm doing. Also, the ball itself. This is a... A two and five sixteenths ball so it's a little bigger but it's also this ball is good for uh, oh 20,000 pounds I believe so you want your ball to be good for whatever you're towing as well you can't just assume that it because your hitch says 12,000 on it that the ball is gonna be good and the ball mount is gonna be good it kind of all has to be good. Uh, you most likely will will need the uh, the seven pin plug, and you will need uh, electric brake controller, which a lot of trucks come with now. And uh, well, that's a completely different video. I'll have to make a video on that as well. It just take too long to get into that right now. Tongue coupling. So now you know what I'm referring to. Okay, you have a chain on the left and you have a chain on the right. This is something that a lot of the, I've checked out a few other videos and I don't think anybody even covers this. Now because you have a chain on the left and the chain on the right, you cross the chains like this, making an X. So you hook the, the right to the left of the truck and the left to the right of the truck, if that makes any sense. Now, there's a few reasons to do this. The main reason, and the reason I do it, is because if your coupling comes off your ball, this forms a cradle for your coupling to sit down into. One other thing I'm gonna mention here is after buying the trailer, it had some cheesy chains on it. Well. When I bought my chains to chain the machine down, I bought a little bit extra and I changed these chains to transport chains. I'll get into that a little later when I'm showing you the chains. Otherwise, everything here is self-explanatory. Uh, that's your breakaway switch here, which hooks to the truck and your electrical hookup. That's all basic stuff. You know that already. Maybe the guy back behind you in the corner might not, but... Okay, enough of that.
Okay, I didn't bother hooking everything up because I'm only moving it about 30 feet. There's almost as many uh, <clears throat> different kinds of ramps as there is different kinds of trailers. These ones here are pretty basic. I'll show you a close-up of these. <laughs> They're kind of scary. Now the way these are held on is this little steel lip here. Looks to be about a half inch overhang and it just fits on the trailer on the bar going across. So any kind of twist, these can flip off. They just, they just sit in this little lip here. I might demonstrate them flipping off if that's what happens. It has happened to me once. I do take precautions. I make it sit flat onto the, on the ground. I parked the truck on a downhill slope. You might not be able to notice on the camera, but uh, it'll be all right. I have it in park with the emergency brake on, so everything's fine. Wait. Okay, this is where I would be making the mistake. Heavy machine. Those legs have to be down. If you don't have those legs, you can uh, block up the back of the trailer and you don't have to completely block it. Like there could be this much space, but you got to put blocks under the back of the trailer because what will happen is kind of like the teeter-totter effect. The machine comes up the ramps it's going to lift the back of that truck up in the air, like a foot or two in the air. The back wheels of the truck will come right off the ground. When that happens, your emergency brake and having it in park will no longer mean anything. So if you're headed down a hill, any kind of slope, you pull this thing up, that truck's just going to launch down the hill. And, oh yeah, I, like I said, I had, had it happen to me. Luckily it was on flat ground and I went, whoa. But also I have seen it happen when the truck launched down the hill, headed towards a highway with the guy that was loading, he was loading a skid steer, a bobcat on it. And he was running down after chasing it. Well, he, he did the wrong thing. If he would have just backed down off the ramps, the truck would have went back onto the ground. But uh, 
you know, when it happens, it just freaks you out and you don't know what, what to do. You panic. But luckily his, his truck headed and hit, went right across his yard. It was went down his driveway across his yard and into a big, huge ditch just before hitting the busy highway, rolling out onto the busy highway. So must put the legs or feet or whatever you want to call them down. And if not, you must block up the back of the trailer. It seems odd that it would do that. You would never expect it to do that. But if you think about it, this thing here weighs pretty much as much as that truck does. Depending on where your wheels are set on your trailer, chances are you're going to lift the back of your truck up off the ground. Anyways, that's my tip for the day. I mean, sometimes you'll have those ramps that are kind of triangular and they will sit, they will stop the trailer from going down too. But uh, I know a lot of trailers don't have, don't have these or those other type of ramps. So that's when you have to block up the back of the trailer. Now, once you have your tracks on the uh, ramps, you're pretty much, you're pushing down on them so they should not move anywhere. But I try to just go up without actually hesitating too much. on the deck to make sure you're even this way. Okay, now just a little bit about the chains. Okay, these are called load binders. These are kind of just cheap ones. Uh, they make a new one now that you just hook your cordless to. So that would be much better. Anyways, these are good for just over 9,000 pounds each. The chain. I use four. I have them cut to about 10 feet each. Uh, people might say, oh, you can get away with two. Well, <laughs> you can, but if you have two and one comes loose or disconnected, then you only have one. If you have four and one comes loose or disconnected, you still have three. Uh, it's a no-brainer to me. Use four. Why not? Now, these, these ones here, in Canada, you have to buy transport chain. Can't use regular old chain. It costs a fair bit more. Cheapest place I found in Canada is a place called Princess Auto. For the neighbors in the States, uh, I believe it's the same as Harbor Freight in the States. So now, okay, now I've got the chain. Well, you, you gotta make sure that the hooks are also rated for the weight. Um, my chains are overkill, but this is one of them situations where uh, overkill is actually a good thing. You'll notice I've got different hooks on one chain with two different hooks. This hook here, it's a 3 8 inch. This is called a lifting hook. You'll see where that comes into play in a second here. This one here is called a grab hook. Self-explanatory kind of. It hooks on and grabs the chain. See it's, oh, it's, it's way narrower in here. Okay. Now you want to pull your machine backwards 
on one side backwards and to the left, on the other side backwards and to the right, on the front forwards and to the left and forwards and to the right. Uh, basically you want to pull it tight in every direction. So under the machine right there, I have an anchoring point. You'll see I put the chain on the hook on this way. Reason for that is if it comes loose, if it's on the other way, it'll drop right off. This way it comes loose, it's still on there. Now the reason I bought chains extra long is because you never know what you're gonna be hauling. You might need a little longer or a little shorter. Now when it comes to uh, chaining on your rails, there's a right way and a wrong way. I actually I watched a, a loading video earlier and uh, yeah, they didn't do the right way. Same thing, you would drop the chain down and through, come back up and hook it up. Just like that. If it comes loose, it's not falling off. Now this is where the binder comes in. You want to extend it out fairly far before you even start. So, Okay, when hooking the binders on, see right now your chain is loose. You want to hook this one as close to this end as you can. It will stop the chain from spinning. So let's just say I go right here. Then you pull it tight. And you hook this one. There. Now, you crank it up. Use whatever you have handy to stop this from spinning. Once I get all four on, I'll tighten them individually. And tight is right. Okay, so you just repeat the same process for all four. Uh, another thing you might want to do, well, you do want to do, is I drive about 20 miles or so down the road before I get to the highway. I pull over and I check all these because it just takes the chain to the chain to move a little bit and you end up with a loose load. Now there's one more thing you want to do here uh, after you have it all chained up. You want to strap your bucket down. That is a uh, law here in British Columbia, probably everywhere. I most likely won't show the whole thing, but I should say that's out too far. <laughs> I should say I'm taking this thing for a long trip. Uh, a lot of highway, but also a lot of rough gravel road. So uh, the next few videos that come out will most likely be me using this thing where I'm taking it to. Basically I have to build a road, uh, what's called a corduroy road. That's where you put logs underneath, gravel on top of the logs because it's in a, uh, a peat bog. So it's kind of the only way, especially up there, to solve the problem. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, you know where to find it. Now you'll get some guys that will say, uh, you want your load to be weighted 60, 40. Well, yeah, that could be true but I don't really know what 60-40 is. 
And I think that might depend too on where your axles are, how long your deck is, this and that. What you want is you want your GVW, your gross vehicle weight, which is the weight of the trailer and the machine. So this, let's say the machine comes in at 7,500 pounds, trailer comes in at uh, 25, that's uh, 10,000 pounds. You want between 10 and 15% of the weight to be pushing down on your truck. So that's your tongue weight. Uh, between 10 and 15%, so 12.5 would be perfect. But how do you get that? Uh, well, you can get a scale. You can buy scales for tongue weight. I, or another way, is just try it in different spots and see how it, uh, how it drives. Third way, go to a scale, weigh your truck, Come home, put your machine on, or next time you're out with your machine on, stop at the weigh scale. It doesn't cost nothing, it just takes a second. And weigh your truck again. Just leave the trailer parked off of the scale and weigh your truck a second time and do the uh, ciphering. <laughs> and that'll give you your exact weight so you know. And then every time you just put your machine in the same spot on the trailer and you're good. Otherwise, it's going to tow Oh wonky. This video is probably getting a bit long. You just throw a decent strap over there and you're good. Okay, so camera kind of ran out of film. I didn't film this part. Same thing. Hook the hooks like that so they don't uh, fall off if the chain loosens. Okay, kind of a long video. One last thing. Wherever you're taking the machine, you're going to make a mess of it. So, good idea to bring a shovel to clean it off because having projectiles falling all over the highway <laughs> is frowned upon so a shovel is a good idea so if I missed anything or if you're the guy is sitting in the back there that doesn't pay much attention um, leave a comment down in that comment section and I'll answer any comments thanks for watching